Hi guys, it's me Chazzer HD and welcome to another episode of the podcast where today we are going to be previewing the next race in 2019, the 2019 Austrian Grand Prix from the Styrian Mountains again in Austria and hopefully, and it really should be, a better race this time than it was last weekend in France. But great news, I have along for the first time in I believe two weeks, Niblo, who of course was not around for the French Grand Prix weekend because he was unwell. So great to have him back. And Nib, how are you doing, mate? And are you looking forward to uh, this weekend's race? Yeah, thanks for that, mate. I'm doing uh, much better. And thanks to um, a couple of people in the chat who were saying, hope you're getting well, whatever. Um, so thanks to those people in the chat who were, who were saying that on the weekend. And, well, certainly after the French Grand Prix, I'm hoping and praying that the Austrian Grand Prix is much, much, much better than the French Grand Prix because we can't have another disastrous, boring race like that. Yeah, it, it, it definitely was not a good race. I don't think anyone can deny that whatsoever, but I think it's best we just move on from that race and get into Austria. So let's, of course, do what we normally do and preview all the teams and start off at the very top, Mercedes. Um, Mercedes and France were were so, so good. They had easily the best car. Now, coming to this weekend's race in Austria, because it's a much different track compared to Paul Ricard and is, say, more similar to Bahrain in Canada, I think Mercedes are definitely more under threat for this weekend's race than they were in Paul Ricard or other races like, for example, the Spanish Grand Prix in Barcelona. I do think Ferrari are going to be right there with them I'm not going to say yet whether Mercedes are going to absolutely be slower because, as we've seen in the past, when it matters most, Mercedes do tend to show the speed to go on to get pole position and then the race win. But because it's a shorter lap and because, again, it suits the Ferrari car more than, say, Paul Ricard, and that will really close things up, I think it will be definitely a lot closer this weekend at the top than it was in Paul Ricard. And that, of course, is great news. Uh, Nib, for Mercedes, do you think, like me, that Mercedes are going to have the best car? Or do... Hold on a minute. Fuck, what are they even talking about? <laughs> <clears throat> do you think, like me, that Mercedes are going to be under threat from Ferrari? And do you think that for the first time in 2019, they could possibly lose a race this season? Quite possibly. I think that uh, Mercedes will obviously be still strong at Austria. They have a strong car where they're going to be strong at every single race, even though they are lacking ever so slightly in that engine department compared to uh, Ferrari. I still think that even though there are, what, eight or nine corners at, at Austria, that because of the types of corners, uh, of course, you've got that hairpin at what is turn three because they count that little kink up towards the hill um, as a as a turn, so... There's lots of um, certainly slow corners there, but I think that I really do think the Mercedes will be um, slower than Ferrari in race. Sorry, in quality trim, but I think in the race, and I know that it's going to be very hot in Austria. Well, I say very hot, not very hot for me as an Australian, but it's going to be 32 degrees on race day, and we've seen that when the temperatures are hot up, well, just Mercedes are better at managing their tires than any other team. Uh, on, on the grid so I think that with the hotter temperatures on race day I still think you have to put Mercedes down as favorites because you can trust them on their tires and we really can't trust any other team uh, to manage their tires well at any other Grand Prix so yeah I still think that Mercedes will probably the team the team to beat on Sunday yeah I I tend to agree with you I think Ferrari and we might as well go on to them now I think for Ferrari, their best hope, if they are going to win on the Sunday, is to get pole position or even lock out the front row. Because, as we've seen so many times this season, Ferrari are performing at their best in terms of speed on a Saturday, not a Sunday. And as you said, because of the hot temperatures that are going to come on race day, that definitely does not suit Ferrari as we go on to them. Now, Ferrari are going to be a lot more competitive this weekend than they were in France because France was never going to be a track 
that was going to be great for them compared to a track like Canada and Bahrain previous in 2019 or this circuit or say the home race Monza coming up later in 2019. We knew this. So I think Ferrari come to this Grand Prix knowing that they have another opportunity to try and get that first elusive win of 2019. One thing though that is say slightly worrying again even though I think they will be a lot closer to going for pole and the win in Austria no matter what. They did bring a couple new parts to the last race in France and they haven't worked really. They haven't moved the Ferrari car forward in terms of speed compared to Mercedes. So Ferrari, in terms of the aerodynamic department, they're not moving forward enough. But again, because this track is an absolute power track and because Ferrari do have it looks as though so far in 2019 the best car for those types of circuits. Ferrari really should be super competitive here. I don't honestly know if they're going to win absolutely or not or get pole position because with Ferrari you just think that no matter what, even if they do have the speed, they're going to find a way to throw it away and not get the result they should get nib for ferrari do you think austria is the weekend where they're actually going to get the best out of their car and properly go for a race win i think that austria will be the best that they get out of their car on a saturday i think that they will probably lock out the front row of the grid on the saturday but on the sunday as i mentioned just before with it going to be so hot in austria I'm just not sure how they're going to really perform. And we know that we've seen, even when they were strong in Canada, um, as soon as they went on the harder compound tyre, uh, Lewis Hamilton was by far the much quicker driver compared to Sebastian Vettel. Uh, we could see that. It was like a five-second gap uh, when Hamilton pitted and then came out behind Sebastian. And he caught that up very, very quickly indeed. And that was because um, Ferrari also struggling with fuel. Um, so that also could be another little issue at Austria. I'm not too sure, though. So I think in the race, you just really can't trust Ferrari. I think on Saturday, though, that they will be extremely, extremely strong. But I think we still have um, big questions about how they will perform on Sunday. Yeah, when it comes to their race day performance, let's hope they prove us wrong. Because even though as long as we get a great race, I don't care who wins the race, you cannot doubt it's great if we have more than one team going for the win. So hopefully Ferrari can be absolutely right up there. But one team that will not be right up there for the race win, no matter how good their best driver performs in Austria, is Red Bull. Red Bull right now with Honda have, I think, not took a massive step back, but they've definitely took a step back compared to Mercedes and I think Ferrari as well. They don't have the speed right now to be seriously competitive for a podium. As France proved, I think Verstappen honestly did so well to finish in P4, considering how that car was compared to Ferrari and Mercedes. And... Coming to this weekend, it's going to need another great performance by Max Verstappen like he produced last year at this circuit and like he has produced so far in 2019 for them to be anywhere near a podium finish. And for the Austrian Grand Prix, I honestly think because of the lack of power that Red Bull have right now, I think in qualifying there is a definite possibility they could end up not even being the quickest team after Ferrari and Mercedes. But I think on race day with Max Verstappen, they will still get a top five finish. For Pierre Gasly though, after the race in France, you have to say Gasly will be stuck in the midfield again. One, because the Red Bull car has took a slight step back, but also because Pierre Gasly, let's face it guys, is just not good enough yeah for red bull nib um do you think that they are going to drop back a lot compared to the top two teams and for gasly you have to say after france he's pretty much guaranteed to be a midfield driver this weekend well who knows with the amount of dutch fans that are going to be at the austrian grand prix of course red bull's home race uh this coming weekend 
who knows they might find some extra horsepowers to power that honda engine which at the moment is the worst engine in the sport which i don't think a lot of people uh would have thought cer- certainly after the first couple of races that renault have certainly overtaken honda and that renault certainly have a very competitive and strong engine and that's why at the moment renault and mclaren are the best two teams in the midfield and for Red Bull, of course, when we talk about Red Bull and where they will finish, we're mainly talking about Max Verstappen. Um, I think that you can really only expect Max to finish in fifth um, unless something crazy happens, say, at turn one, because, of course, accidents can happen at turn one because of just the nature of the corner. So it's going to be a difficult weekend for Red Bull, I think so. And the reason why they were so strong and why Max was so strong and, of course, won the race here last year was because they were so good on their tyres. and. That's certainly not a trait that is carried over to this year. They are much better on the older tyres, which were used in 2018, and they're certainly nowhere near as good as the, on the new tyres, which were used for now the 2019 season. And, yeah, with Pierre Gasly, you know, I, I said that he wouldn't beat Verstappen in qualifying uh, all year. You know, I don't count uh, Canada because, well, it, it was obvious that, uh, oh, dear, you know, hashtag better than Red Bull. Um, Kevin, Kevin Magnuson and Rich Energy stopped stopped that. So, so uh, Rem Grosjean wasn't it who crashed. I can't remember who crashed. It was one of the Haas's anyway. Um, but yeah, for Gasly, I think he'll be in the midfield, probably behind the McLarens. I expect the McLarens to be very strong at Austria. So Gasly, uh, just not good enough at the moment. You know, there was a couple of races where he was getting, where he was improving um, race to race. But the last couple of races at, at Canada and now, the last Grand Prix at Paul Ricard, he's taken major step back, major steps backwards. You know, having to qualify on the soft tire to get through to Q3 um, on for qualifying absolutely ruined his entire weekend. And the reason why, he of course, had to qualify on the soft tire was because if he didn't qualify on the soft tire, he wouldn't have made it through to Q3. So his whole weekend was compromised by that because he was just not quick enough compared to his teammate and. Yeah, at the moment, I think that Pierre, if Pierre Gasly continues to perform at this standard, that his days at Red Bull are more than likely numbered. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, honestly, after that race and after seeing the reaction from certain people, I think Gasly is absolutely, definitely for next year at the latest, done at Red Bull. Racing now, let's get into the midfield. And first, go on to Renault, who... I think in France, even though they weren't as uh, competitive as McLaren in terms of pace, I think it was still a good weekend. Of course, without Ricardo's penalty, it would have been a very good uh, race result, but Ricardo got his penalty, and of course, that is what happened. But I think coming to this race weekend, I think things are definitely looking good. Both Ricardo and Hulkenberg are, I think, pretty good around this track, especially on race day, so... I think Renault are definitely going to be in the top 10. And because, as Nib said, because Renault are definitely improving in terms of power compared to, say, Honda, I think Renault are definitely going to be very strongly in that top 10, definitely with McLaren. So, yeah, for Renault, Nib, after the weekend in France, which was still pretty good, where do you think they'll be in Austria? I think, for me, again, I think they're still going to be pretty good. Yeah, it was a bit of a tricky weekend for Renault. Of course, Nico Hockenberg made a made a mistake on his last Q2 run, which probably would have got him into Q3 if he hadn't have made that mistake. But for Renault, the issue was that their upgrades didn't particularly work at Paul Ricard because all of a sudden you bring new upgrades and then your tyres can't get in, in the right uh, zone. So I think that's an issue for a lot of the teams at the moment because, of course, when you bring different upgrades... The way that you work your tyres changes completely because, of course, every time you bring more downforce or, who knows, you could bring less downforce, although I don't think that uh, the teams certainly intend to do that. Um, so for Renault, I think I think at um, Austria it will be a good weekend once again. Of course, they have a very competitive engine. Uh, one, the best in the... Well, the third best, yeah, obviously, it's behind Mercedes and Ferrari, but it's still very strong. So for, for Renault... 
they have they have, they have a very solid car. We've we've seen this now the last couple of races. They're constantly making it into Q three at least with Daniel Ricciardo now. So I I really do believe that Renault will have a very a, a, once again a good weekend. Maybe not as strong as what they had in say in Canada, but I think it will be stronger than what they had uh, this past race at Paul Ricard. And I'd expect them to be uh, battling with McLaren for say P P six P seven all weekend long. So that's why I expect Renault to be for the Austrian Grand Prix. Yeah, and well, we'll move straight on to McLaren. And yeah, I think Renault and McLaren absolutely coming into this weekend. And I think France and also Canada has made this pretty clear that McLaren and Renault are the two best teams in the midfield. No doubt about it. They also have consistently probably the two best cars, even though sometimes they don't qualify absolutely you know, at the front of the midfield. So, yeah, McLaren and Renault are going to be very competitive at the front of the midfield. I think McLaren, honestly, are going to be even stronger this weekend than they were in France because, as we've said plenty of times, at low drag circuits in 2019, McLaren have been pretty good. And, of course, Austria is low drag. So, I think McLaren will definitely... I'm going to say this now. I think they'll definitely get a car onto the third row of the grid. I don't know for sure where both cars will be, but I think they are going to be very, very competitive in that midfield battle. Nib for McLaren. Uh, for one, were you very impressed by their performance in France? And do you think it can get, as I just said, even better this weekend? I was indeed very impressed by McLaren's performance um, at the French Grand Prix. I didn't expect them to be quite that quick. I didn't expect them to be only a couple of thousandths off out qualifying Max Verstappen in qualifying. So I think that McLaren were extremely, extremely quick, and they're even quick on the medium tyre as well in Q2, which you don't really see that the big teams are very good on the medium tyre in qualifying. But you see when other, team, when other midfield teams switch to the medium tyre in qualifying, they're usually quite poor. But that was not the case with um, McLaren. They were very strong in Q2. So it was a great, great weekend for McLaren. And the team certainly is going in the right direction. I think it's a bit too early to say that McLaren are back or anything like that. But certainly under Andreas Seidel, Zach Brown even. I, I, must, I must commend Zach Brown. I think he's done a very good job, especially this season, in getting the right people in the right positions. Andreas Seidel. Uh, James Key. So I think that McLaren is certainly going in the right direction. Of course, they're now building their own wind tunnel um, at Woking. So that's going to help them so much more. They won't have to use the old Toyota one in a couple of years' time now. So McLaren really going in the right place. Um, I think they will be um, top of the midfield, if I'm perfectly honest, in Austria. As, as we've talked about all season long in Bahrain, Baku, they were very, very strong. And that was because there's lots of straight. Their cars are very, very good in a straight line because it's, it's, well, it doesn't produce drag, which is the opposite to, of course, the 20, 2018. So I really think that McLaren will have a very strong weekend. And I wouldn't be surprised, if, certainly in qualifying, if they're not too far off Max Verstappen once again. And you never know, as we saw, if you look at the lap comparison between Norris and Verstappen, in a straight line, the McLaren was definitely faster than the Red Bull. So you never know, McLaren could out-qualify Red Bull, but I don't expect them to out-race uh, Max Verstappen in the Red Bull. Now let's get on to the rest of the midfield teams. Alfa Romeo first. Uh, Alfa are kind of back after... Spain, Monaco, Canada, where they didn't really do anything and were very poor in France. They were very good. Qualifying was pretty good. And then the race, especially for Kimi Raikkonen, was very, very good. His performance was one of the best of the season, no doubt about that. Of course, Antonio Giovinazzi paid the price for a great qualifying performance by having to start on the softest compound and then uh, fell back through the field. So... I think hopefully from an alpha point of view that the performance from them in France was not a one-off because if they have another three races in a row now where they're nowhere, then that's not going to help them against teams like Toro Rosso, Racing Point and also Haas who they're battling in the constructors. So alpha 
Hopefully for them, they can produce basically the same weekend. I think, honestly, that would be good enough for them. Again, compared to teams like Haas, Racing Point, and Toro Rosso. Uh, for Alpha Nib, were you also impressed by them and a bit surprised by them in France? Very surprised by Alfa Romeo in France. Antonio Giovinazzi, superb job to get into Q3 in qualifying, out qualifying Kimi Raikkonen. Uh, like he did at the Canadian Grand Prix. So two races in a row now that Giovinazzi has out-qualified Kimi Raikkonen. And quite honestly, I didn't quite expect that um, going into the season. Of course, he did struggle a little bit at the start of the season to Giovinazzi. But last couple of races, um, pretty much since Baku, um, he, he really has picked it up. Of course, it compromised then his race um, having to start on the soft tie-up. But Kimi Raikkonen, fantastic job the, the alpha was very very consistent and managed its tie as well of course kimmy is very good at, at managing uh tires we know he's a, a very smooth driver and has a very good feel for the car so very very good by alpha romeo but i don't expect them to be quite as good um at austria if i'm perfectly honest i'm not too sure what actually made them good at france i think they did have some upgrades which certainly did help, I, I believe. So I can't exactly rem remember if they did have upgrades for the French Grand Prix, but if they did have those upgrades, then yeah, then then absolutely fair play. But I don't think they would will be as strong. Uh, I don't think their car will be as strong at this sort of circuit. We've seen last year that um, at the French Grand Prix they were very strong. Of course, that was where Charles Leclerc for the first time made it into Q3 in that Alfa Romeo. So. I think it'll, they'll be just outside of the points. Who knows? They could sneak a point if there's um, if cars ahead struggle uh, with Taiwo or have some issues once again. But I'd expect once again a pretty solid uh, weekend from the Alfa Romeo outfit. Also, before we move on to Haas, I just want to ask you this because we've had a question in our Discord from Bois about Antonio. Um, Giovinazzi, I'll give my thoughts as well. And I think he was asking about how do we feel about him so far this season? For me, his first three races, I honestly thought he was a bit poor. There were definitely issues he had, and I think he dealt with them well. But I definitely do think he started off slowly. Baku, I think he was very good, but was very unfortunate with having a penalty. Spain and Monaco and Canada, you have to say, he didn't have a good enough car to really show what he could do. And Canada, I think, did pretty well, except for a spin, of course. And then, of course, in France, I qualified his teammate, but as you said, paid the price. For me, so far this season, I would say, honestly, he's had a 50-50 start. What do you think about him? Um, Well, heading into the season, I didn't expect an awful amount. Of course, he's going up against a very good and, of course a very experienced teammate in Kimi Raikkonen and expected Kimi to to really trounce him um, in the early stages of the season, which he did for the first um, three races. Of course, Giovinazzi hadn't driven a single-seater car since 2017, I believe, or 2016. I can't remember what um, what season was his last year um, in F2 when he, when he battled with Gasly for the championship. So... I think it just took him a little bit of time to get used to uh, driving a single-seater car once again. Of course, he was doing lots and lots of simulator work for Ferrari um, in that time where he wasn't driving the car. But I must say, since really Baku, you know, of course, he's had a couple of off races. But for, for a rookie, that's that's expected, if I'm perfectly honest. And he has impressed me to out-qualify Kimi Raikkonen in two races in a row. I think that is really impressive. And if he continues this sort of performance... Um, I th I think I I think that he can be a really good driver. I he needs to translate his good performances into points on race day though. That is the main thing of course. You can be great on a Saturday but the points are scored on the Sunday and sadly his great qualifying at France cost him on race day. So I think for Giovinazzi he's had a, he's had a very solid start to the year. I wouldn't say it's been fantastic or outstanding. But he certainly had a very, very solid start to the season as the Italian driver. Yeah, I think it's been, yeah, about a 50-50. And as you said, if he can convert his speed on a Saturday to a result on a Sunday, I think then he does have a pretty good 
uh, opportunity of keeping his seat at the team for 2020 and beyond. But now let's go on to Haas. And honestly, we're probably going to keep this brief because, well, in France, they had their worst weekend as an F1 team. They had no speed whatsoever from practice one up until the race day. Of course, the hot temperatures didn't help that. But because this weekend we are going to see even more hot temperatures and because their car right now looks like an absolute dog, I don't see how, again, they finish the points. I just don't. See it, and that's all I'm really going to say on Haas because I've kind of not given up on them, but I definitely lost a bit of hope in them after the last couple races. Nib for Haas, yeah, because it's going to be another hot weekend. Can they really do anything good this weekend? I was just about to say, with it going to be, uh, well, I say very hot, it's not very hot, warm. Um, in Austria, it's going to be 32 degrees, of course, as we mentioned uh, just before. I think the Haas, once again, will struggle and will probably be one of the worst teams, if not the worst team in the midfield for the Austrian Grand Prix. Of course, they were absolutely, utterly hopeless um, in the last race. And of course, at Canada, they weren't much better at, at all. So the last two races for Haas have really been disappointing. And I don't really see an upwards trend because... Lots of teams are bringing small and small upgrades, which is so important um, in the first year of a new set of regulations. And of course, Haas really don't have the infrastructure or the money to bring new parts to the car as frequent as the other teams are. So I think that's really, really hurting them at the moment. So I think Haas, they'll have once again another poor weekend and they're certainly going to need some big upgrades to improve that car. Yeah, they definitely are. And I think, honestly, if it continues like this until the summer break, they might as well start concentrating on 2020 because this season is definitely turning into a bit of a disaster. But now let's go on to Toro Rosso. For me, France was in qualifying. I thought Toro Rosso did pretty well with Alexander Albon, but the race was a bit disappointing. I think that was kind of to do with Alexander Albon's poor start. But Coming to this race, I I think in qualifying, Toro Rosso are going to be firmly outside the top 10. Race day, they'll be there or thereabouts. But I think, honestly, because Honda have now fell behind Renault in terms of outright power, that is all uh, also affecting Toro Rosso, along with Red Bull, in their fight against other teams. So I think Toro Rosso... They're going to be in there, say, with Alfa Romeo, but they're not going to be as strong as they were, say, Spain-Monaco time, because, again, the Honda power unit has took a step back. For Toro Rosso, Nib, um, yeah, I think they're probably in for a France-type weekend. Do you agree? Yeah, I'd have to agree with you at the moment. Toro Rosso have just slipped back a little bit in the last in the last few races, if, you, if we're going to be perfectly honest. Um, of course, they had that battle for Gasly's seat during the race, which was good to see. One of the little uh, little exciting points of the race. One of all two, actually one of them, which we actually got to see live. So, of course, good job FOM for that. Um, but yeah, for Tor Russell, I don't really expect too much. It's kind of gone back to how they were at the start of the season. I remember saying in our season preview that they're sort of just a mare team, you know, you don't know what to expect from them. You don't really know where they're going to be. And that's how I feel about them going into this weekend um, at the Austrian Grand Prix. So I'm not too really sure where they are going to be this weekend, if I'm perfectly honest. Yeah, I think, honestly, the best bet is around Alfa Romeo, probably at best. I don't think they'll be on McLaren or Renault's level, though, at all. And, of course, the last midfield team is Racing Point. Uh, Racing Point... I think we'll be stronger at this race in terms of the result they get compared to France because I think this type of circuit does suit their car better. But you have to say, as of late, Racing Point do have the worst car in the midfield, especially when it comes to qualifying pace because they just can't get any good pace out of the car on a Saturday and that is really affecting them on a Sunday because... On a Sunday, they do have really good race pace, but because they qualify so far back, they give themselves too hard 
uh, a job to finish in the points. But I will say, and I'll ask you this, Nib, in a moment, about Lance Stroll. And again, I think as you've said, Nib, in the past, if Stroll could just improve his qualifying pace, then he'd be very, very good in that midfield. Because if you look at Stroll's pace during the French Grand Prix and also during the races this season, if he started five positions higher, he could have scored points at every single race this season. And you could also say the same for Perez at times, because... Again, the racing point is just so good on a race day. It's very frustrating. It must be very frustrating for the team to be so good on a race day in terms of race pace, but then finish outside the points because they give themselves, again, too hard a job to get into those points. But yeah, for, for racing point, if, where do you think they'll be? But also, with Lance Stroll, if he did qualify, you know, three or four positions higher, do you think he would be a consistent point scorer like a, a Nico Hulkenberg or a Kimi Raikkonen? Yeah, well, I think we mentioned this on the last podcast with Lance Stroll, that if he were just able to get himself into Q2, then who knows if he puts in a very good lap, he could, uh, you know, start 11th or, or 12th, or who knows, even make it through to Q3, because we've seen that he, he can sometimes put in a very good lap. We've seen him, what he did, he get second or third at Monza in the wet. Of course, that is in the wet in what was a pretty good Williams car uh, in 2017, I believe it was. So we see that on occasion, Lance can put in a good qualifying performance, but we have not seen it at all so far this season. And he had a very good race at, at, for the, at the French Grand Prix. He had very good race pace. He did a very, he did a very good job in the first stint going long on the, on the hard compound tire, but because he had to do all of that work and fight through cars and sit behind other cars whilst he was on a better tire, certainly for the race, he just lost time. And if he had started a few positions ahead, who knows? He could have certainly been there around about where Pierre Gasly was um, for, for 11th place or so. So, Stroll, please improve your qualifying because I think if he does improve his qualifying, he can be certainly. Um, not say Kimi Räikkönen or Nico Hülkenberg. I still think that those two drivers are much better than Lance Stroll, but I still think that he can be a very solid um, midfield driver if he can sort out his qualifying. But racing point, the car really isn't that strong. We've seen it uh, multiple times. Of course, we we're praising them. How are they still fifth in the constructors' championship just a couple of races ago? And well, they're certainly not fifth in the constructors anymore. They've fallen back massively in the last couple of races since they brought upgrades. Um, I can't remember where they brought upgrades, but they brought up quite a lot of upgrades at a race, um, a few races back. And since then, they haven't really improved at all. They've fallen further behind the rest of the midfield. And it's just really not looking like a quite a promising season um, for racing points. So I think at Austria, they will probably, well, Lance Stroll will get knocked out in Q1. Uh, please prove me wrong, Lance, because I'd really like it because I think he can do a good job in the race. But I think that probably the best that they can hope for is P13 in the race, probably with Perez or who knows if Stroll has a blinder. Um, that he could maybe get push a little bit higher up into the points, but or closer to the points, I should say. So, yeah, I'm 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 not too optimistic for um, racing points weekend in Austria. Um, and also for racing point, I think, and those upgrades that failed uh, came at Spain, I believe. What they're waiting for desperately is this massive upgrade for Hockenheim. That's what they're waiting for because they're just going nowhere right now. And until they get a big new upgrade that puts them a step forward, they're not really going to do anything this season, probably finish 8th or ninth in the Constructors. So, yeah, at the moment, Racing Point not looking that great. And, of course, Williams at the back. And, uh, well, who, ca uh, who cares? And now... To end this podcast, let's go on to our predictions and who we think will be in the top three in qualifying and also the race. So for me, I'll start off in qualifying by going for a Ferrari 1-2. Yes, I'm going for a Ferrari 1-2 in qualifying. Charles Leclerc ahead of Sebastian Vettel. is going to be close, but I think Leclerc will get it because I think Leclerc is good at this circuit. And then in third place... I am going to go for Valtteri Bottas uh, in qualifying because, as we've seen in the past, Valtteri is really good at this circuit. But then on race day, I think 
that Valtteri Bottas will win because, as uh, Nib has pointed out earlier, Mercedes on a race day are way better than Ferrari. And then in second, I'm going to go for Charles Leclerc. And then in third place, I'm going to go for Lewis Hamilton. Now, when it comes to Ferrari, the one thing I will say is their only hope of winning is really if they have a front row lockout and if they lead 1-2 after the first lap because then they can protect their lead of the race. And I think, honestly, that's the only... Well, not the only way they're going to win, but that's the... No, that's the best chance they have of winning this race. And hopefully we do have a two-team fight at the very top nib. For uh, qualifying the race in the top three, who are you going for? So pretty similar to what you're going for. But in qualifying, I'm going for Sebastian Vettel um, for pole position. Even though he did have a disappointing qualifying at France, we know the reasons why he had quite a poor qualifying. He had engine issues. He had gearbox issues. So. Quite a whole load of uh, issues that hampered Sebastian's qualifying uh, in Q3 in France. But So I'm going to go with him on pole. Then for a Ferrari lockout, of course, Charles Leclerc in P2. And then I do agree with you because Valtteri Bottas, as we've seen throughout his whole entire career here, he is superb at um, this track in Austria. So I, I do agree with you. Valtteri Bottas will finish third in qualifying. But then for the race... Even though what well, I'm going to contradict what I just said before, for me, I think that Sebastian Vettel will win the Austrian Grand Prix. Ferrari need a win so, so bad. And I think they will just about win this Grand Prix because I don't see them losing positions on the first lap, of course, if they were to qualify and lock out the front row. But then in second place, I'm going to be going for Valtteri Bottas. I think he'll be putting Sebastian under lots and lots of pressure in the latter stages of the Grand Prix. But with, with Ferrari and how strong their engine is, I don't see a, how Bottas is going to get past Sebastian in the latter stages of that Grand Prix. And then in third place, I'm going to go for Charles Leclerc once again. And... You know, some people might be saying, oh, you're underrating Hamilton here. Like, obviously, Hamilton is a very good driver. He's just getting better and better um, as the season's going on. We can see that now over the last couple of Grand Prix. But I just think that Ferrari are going to be stronger at this race. And Bottas, I think, has his, has an edge over Hamilton on this track. Even though we've seen, even though Bottas has been quite poor in the last couple of Grand Prix, I think that Bottas will bounce back um, strongly because he has to, because the championship, uh, which he loves to keep on talking about for whatever reason, he just thinks about the championship every single race, which I don't think um, is a particularly good thing. You don't don't really want to start thinking about the championship until later in the season. At this early stage, there's still such a long way to go. And the way that Hamilton's driving at the moment, um, everything leads to saying that Hamilton will probably win the championship. But of course, we are only at Austria. So I think Bottas really needs a strong weekend. And I think that Hamilton will finish in P4. So those are my predictions for the Austrian Grand Prix. And of course, leave your predictions uh, in the comments. Of course, our predictions will most likely change um, after qualifying as, as natural things do happen. Because of course, there's been no... Um, there's been no track time, um, certainly at the moment. So I think it will be a good Austrian Grand Prix. I'm certainly looking forward to it. I think anything could be better than the France Grand Prix that we just had. And I, I must say, I'm really, really looking forward to this Grand Prix. It has to deliver because the last couple of races have been, well, the Canadian Grand Prix was very good, but we haven't had many very good races so far this season. Only really Bahrain and Canada have been have been great races. So we need another great race here. Otherwise, this season is is certainly not going in a good direction. Absolutely. We do need a good race. And I think we'll definitely get a better race because the track is better suited to a good race than, say, the Paul Ricard circuit is. And as you said... Again, we do need a good race because so far this season, most of the season has been quite meh. We've only had, I'd say, three at most good races. Bahrain, Monaco and Canada. Monaco only really because of the Hamilton for Staffen battle. Um, so yeah, we definitely need a good race in, Austri in Austria and hopefully we do get it. 
But guys, that has been it for this podcast. Thank you guys for coming along and previewing the 2019 Austrian Grand Prix with us. And again, as Nib said, leave your comments down below as to what you think is going to happen in the race. Nib, great to have you back, mate. And hopefully we'll have you around this Sunday for what should be definitely a better Formula One race. Yep, I certainly hope to be part of the race watch along on Sunday for the Austrian Grand Prix. We'll see, though. Um, but yes, of course, thanks for having me on as usual. And I hope you all have a very good day. Absolutely. And I just want to let you guys know that as we did last weekend, don't forget to subscribe for the watch alongs of practice to qualifying in the race. I'll be live on Friday at 1.30 p.m. UK time for the practice to watch along. So make sure to come around for that. And then I'll update you as to the timings of everything else during the weekend. But yeah, don't forget to subscribe for the practice to watch along, qualifying watch along, quali uh, the race watch along, and the, of course, the race and qualifying reviews during the weekend as well. Bottom right of the screen, you can do it right there, or uh, go to my homepage, subscribe, and of course, hit the notifications bell. Very important you do that. And also smash the like if you want to see content on this channel continue like this. And as well, don't forget to join our Discord server, link below in the description. That is the best place for notifications of my uh, videos and streams. And also, that is the hardcore Chazza HDF1 community. And during the race weekend, it is pretty active. And also, follow me on Twitter at Chaz6110. And check out my website, ChazzaHD.com, for more content like this. But guys, until my practice to watch along stream on Friday, it has been me. Chaz or HD. Goodbye.